Good morning, folks. Late start today as I was watching to see the directions of some of these filaments lifting off. None ended up erupting in Earth's direction, but I wasn't sure that was going to be the case two hours ago. We did see a number of releases and we'll need to continue monitoring our star as the southern coronal hole enters central longitudes. There is absolutely no shortage of those plasma filaments across our star, and we can even see what appears to be a few active regions coming in over the limb there on the left. Looking at the solar wind here, we see that we are entering the minor starting blocks of a coronal hole stream. Not a tremendously powerful one at this time, but we are already seeing the KP index bottom right on the rise back to instability range. Eyes on it. Let's get through some of the science articles quickly. We find first a star spinning backwards, or maybe all its planets are orbiting backwards. Either way, they don't match. In our solar system, all the planets orbit around the sun, the direction the sun rotates. It's just not the case here. I erupted like Mount Etna did yesterday, only with laughter upon seeing a confirmation of what the Texas Energy had said. Reliable energy has been under attack. Unreliable wind and solar is a crutch that just broke with this winter storm. He's calling for better and more secure gas contracts, which may get this person called into Biden's office for a finger nibble and a scolding. Up next, another broadening of the Nova event range. They cannot pinpoint exactly how this event occurred. It doesn't follow any of the known rules for X-ray transients. But also, as they discover more and more, the rules seem to bend and break, just like the crutch. This is just another nod to the notion that these mechanisms given to us in science are merely best guess possibilities and the range of display of stellar outbursts is very broad. Now we've got two new articles on Earth's magnetism, and the first here discusses the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion, one of the bad ones, which happened about 47,000 years ago. You do see isotope error ranges in the thousands of years for this one, but FYI, we went over the scientific paper for this back on January 29th, if you recall. And honestly, less than a month between our paper analysis and the official press release, it's actually pretty fast for mainstream news, just not for observers. We also have a quote, new one, out on the Younger Dryas. We hit the paper for this briefly back in October, but the gist is that the harshness of the world took out the megafauna, not human hunting, as was the case with the Neanderthal during Le Champ and Mono Lake. While not as bad as the millions of years comet and asteroid cycle, the 12,000-year cycle event wipes a few species off the list every time and stresses the remainder to significant degrees. They are coming every 11 to 13,000 years apart, as with the Heinrich harmonics. The last one was right at the waiting time expected for another now. And just yesterday, we saw the first identification of the 2015 shift we thought we noticed back then in a video called How Close We Came. This new identification of the observed shift slides in with the others. This all began the same year as the Carrington event super solar flare. The field took off again. It accelerated at the turn of the millennium and now we've seen two more accelerations noted, 2015 and 2017. Since my telling you to go watch the background playlist doesn't seem to be working very well, smiley face, here's the answer to the newbie question we get every day. First, we'll lose the grid and technology. Then as society is crumbling therefrom, the crescendo occurs. Now. Go watch the playlist, noobs. Playlists are on my channel page, link below, and at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.